Okay, let's talk about basics. We will start with some moves and strings that are very important as Jetpack Kano. You've got one, this is basically only a stagger. You can do one and grab, for example, or you can do one raw asset, or you can do one down one asset. This is just a part of your mix up game. So, the same goes for your 1 1, but it's actually a little bit more plus, a uh, little bit more um, uh, ambitious if you do something afterwards. But a lot of people will basically see the throw coming because a lot of Kano player use this. And, and Ripper Variation uses this with a grab at the end. So, then you've got the 1 1 2. This is also a plus string. It's wonderful to poke afterwards with the back 4. But some people will try to jump you. This is not a good thing when they do it, because you will get hit by the by the, by the jump in when you do the back four. But if you have conditioned them enough, basically like um, two or three times, you can just back back walk and hope they will jump. Because when they jump, you can do your anti air. We we'll cover that later. Okay, next we have got two two. 2 2 and block is bullshit, you have to cancel it in somewhat. Um, for example, Wigamite. Cancel it with Wigamite is pretty good because you could either go for um, your Kano Ball, that is actually a little bit buff. If you hit with it and you make the upwards version of it, you deal a good amount of damage. Also, you can use it as stagger. So, if it hits, you see they move a little bit backwards. Perfect range for your back three. If they, if you do a counter hit, welcome critical blow. And of course, you could also cancel it into knife. You can cancel it into knife amplified too. So why I, I do this a lot? You see it in the videos. It's because people get used to this one here, so they try to poke afterwards. If you throw the knife. Hey, you got a free turn, new round. And basically, if they are, uh, let me put him on block. Mm. Okay, you can see the distance here. This is actually pretty good because you can dash out. If they don't poke, you can dash out of a lot of moves. It's like this one here. His back one knife is the same trick with a knife on block. Uh, your R minus. You are minus eight, but look at this distance. Yeah, you can't do anything on this distance, so it's pretty much safe. If they try to to do something like for, with a high attack or something, immediately down to hello critical blow. So this is very nice. Uh, the next string would be his two four. Uh, all the ripper variation players know this very well because you have the launcher in it. His um, 2 4 1 is useless. It's completely garbage. Because, first off, they can um, actually perfect block it, and you're so fucking minus afterwards. It's just not worth it. Uh, however, in a combo, maybe. I haven't discovered enough now. You could use it, because it leaves the enemy grounded in the. He immediately stands up afterwards. So, this may be a thing, I don't know. See, it's like a magnetic pull. <laughs> also, his 1 1 2 string. His 1 1 2 string is one of my favorite moves. Although, the last hit can be perfect blocked, so be careful about it. Now, my absolute favorite move is back 3. Why? Because, yeah, you are minus a block. I think it was minus 5 when I'm correct. Oh, it's only minus 4. Okay. But it has a really weird animation. So people often tend to punish it too late or press something too late. And then you have got basically a free down one. If people are not used to it, you have a P, uh, free down one. If they are used to it, they will kind of poke. Uh, they will poke you right away, sorry. Uh, but when they are doing this, this is actually where the fun starts. I will show you, wait a moment. So, the fun part starts when the enemy knows he can poke afterwards. And you are not plus. He, If he then pokes, and you know it, you can go for a perfect block. 
because you can save it in your muscle memory. A poke, basically in Mortal Kombat 11, all pokes have the same frame data. I know it's different like one or two frames, but here comes the thing. The perfect block has basically a tolerance of three frames. So if you save your muscle memory to fastly block down and then do your up two thing, you get a combo for free and dirt pack's case you get a setup for free. I would try to show you it. It's a little bit hard to do in practice because I have to basically play two characters. I will show you. See? Now I try it with the down four. See? Same. I'm gonna try it with the jab. See? Same. I will try it with the two. Okay, two is, is another frame. No, it's the same frame. So, oh, okay, two. With the four. Okay, four is surely not uh, punish for Kuglao. <laughs> but just to show you how big this tolerance is, if you save the muscle memory. Yeah? This is huge! Ladies and gentlemen, learn perfect blocking. I'm at it right now. Um, this can really, really turn a match around. Trust me, because you could do a setup afterwards. So, now we move away from back three and we go into his back four. This is really great. Uh, especially because it's fucking safe. I tested it with Cassie. I will not show this now because this video will be way too long if I show that. It's, it can't be punished by Cassie. No way. If she, even if she tries with the high, for example, you can dodge it and down to Uppercut City. Okay? So this move, you need to fucking abuse the hell out of it. I do it way too less. It's basically from uh, back three aside, this is his best reaching move and safest move because this one is crappy. I know, you can combo of it, but... <sighs> Please don't only use it if you know you're hitting. This is just it costs me so many rounds of thing. Okay, and the next move. Down four. Because down four has got an update. It has been buffed. So the hit advantage has been a little bit increased. Um uh, in that way that basically a back three will chill now they can't do anything about it they can't jump out they can't back dash it it will hit and when you press a button you know critical blow bam, bam you know the deal um you can also do something like this one here on on here okay on block it's minus nine so and let's see um when you block it oops when you block it the distance. This is pretty good. I think there's no chance you can be punished for it. Also, on block, you should cancel it into acid, and now you're minus 16 and nothing can reach you. So, this is also a great tool. I should use this more often now. Hey guys, let's talk about Kano's anti air. Uh, Kano's anti air sucks. Um, he's probably one of the worst characters in the game when it comes to anti airing. In my opinion, at least. Um, he's got basically four ways to, to do an anti-air. Uh, the fourth one would be a standing one. It's basically the best when you can see the jump very clearly because the enemy is far away. Or mid-screen or something like that. This will sometimes work too because you make a little bit the hitbox a little bit smaller. But it's really iffy. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend this at all. Yeah, um, the best anti air he's got is basically a standing four, but it's just so slow, it's really hard to react. Um, and you can't combo really afterwards. You can throw a mollo, this is all you can do, but that's not. The next one would be his down two. His down two isn't the best, but it, uh, it, it seals the deal, I guess, okay? And the new one I want to talk about is, um, Basically, his asset because asset has got a lot more. It's faster now. The hitbox is better. Um, this works really good. Um, see here. I I would say this is this is one of the better ways to anti air now. And you still got in directly into setups. This is basically the best thing ever. Okay, so I would tr I will try to basically anti air only with asset um, till now. I often go for those stagger combos because there is some potential in them and I want to find out how 
extreme can you can you be with that and I'll I also always want to know how to enemies react to it okay so I basically always go with that one so and why I do this Wegemite here is because now I have basically an option select big or um, uh, I can see if I'm hitting him with a 2-2 two -two. Uh, hit confirm I uh, just wasn't in my mind sorry guys so you can hit confirm it easier this way so you had a 2-2 two -two. yeah and then I can decide okay he blocked everything. I go back. Yeah? You can go back, come back three or something. Or you hit everything. I can decide, okay. I go step forward. Back three. If I have the killing blow ready. At uh, the critical blow, sorry. Or Okay. For example. You can even uh, try to be really an asshole. Look at this damage. The first part can't be blocked, it's guaranteed. This is a combo, okay? You deal 200 damage, this is nice and fine. Okay, here we go again. Here. 200 damage. And now... I'm just... There are now two, two possible ways. He will block or he will get hit. There's nothing else can happen. There's nothing else can happen. Okay, perfect block, maybe. So, if he blocks it... And I go into this one, I can still throw a knife, for example. Still go into this one. Still simply backdash. I have the, basically the upper hand. It doesn't, I, I don't give a fuck what's happening. I have the upper hand, okay? And now, when they get used to the setup, they will definitely block the second part, right? They know it will come. So, what you can do now... You can do something like this one. You jump in, stop at his port, bam! Woohoohoo! Makes up city. They will see the jump, right? I mean, this one will only work against people who are completely um, surprised, yeah? But, you can even do uh, another one. You can simply do this one. This still is good. So there are a lot of options, just just figure something out you like the most, because this is what makes Dirtbag so cool. It's it's basically more of a, uh, I see something, I react to it, or I, s it, it's, it's, it's all about conditioning and playing, playing your, your bag of dirt and hope the enemy won't figure it out what, what you want to do next. So just, just mix it up a little bit and everything is fine. You have no overhead low mixers, but you have a fucking Molotov and you have, a, have your acid on meter burn with this stuff. But again, I don't like to spend meter at all for this one. I do it if you like it. I just don't like it. I like the old school way. And I need my meter for my Wiggy, Wiggy balls and for my knives, for example. Yeah. But sometimes, of course, when people start jumping me out of the Molotov, I will use this one because they will jump right away in it. So... Okay, let me let me show you why I don't like this setup. It would be a good setup, but it won't combo. Yes, it's it it is an unblockable, but it's over. Afterwards, it's over. And if you see here, if you if you mess up the timing or something, it also can be blocked. They can also roll out of it. It's just, I think it is not worth to spend one bar for it. That's that my point of view. I will now show some combos I often use in the corner um, because I think corner, uh, combo wise we are basically at the peak already I mean of course you could optimize it a little bit more or you do this combo you do that combo but uh, come on you do like 10 or 20 percent damage it doesn't really really matter that much do that one that we are familiar with that works great you have the muscle memory with it it's much better um, also later on the videos after the combos I have some gameplay footage just to show you what I meant earlier in the video basically just the fundamentals I'm talking about so okay I think I will shut my mouth now 
I wish you the best of fun. You guys are the best. And see you next time. is a beard.